I'll run an update here. I'm on day seven of an extended 41 day minimum water fast. And what am I experiencing now is the digestion of tea tree oil and perhaps other essential oils that I had put on my foot. Based on the recommendation of a of a nutritionist and who told me to heal athlete's foot and nail fungus what I should do is twice a day put tea tree oil on the foot and I didn't put it on for many days I did use it from time to time because it seemed to be effective what would happen is the tea tree oil would go into the nail and the skin and I could feel it moving through my body and the reason that is is because your skin is highly absorbent and a lot of people don't realize this but the skin is absorbent and the skin breathes you put stuff on your skin it will take it into your body skin is one of the largest organs in the body and there are multiple layers to it there is the epidermis which is the top layer and then underneath that there is the corium skin so anyways now i am digesting that and the conclusion i've come to is that recommendation from the nutritionist and other people who posted online is probably wrong i think that tea tree oil is toxic for your body because the feeling that i have right now it's not a good feeling i think tea tree oil is toxic to your body and is probably not the right way to heal. So wanted to put that update out there. Now when it comes to some of the other essential oils, it could likewise be the case. I have tried with other essential oils and what I would generally do is take a, a base or carrier oil and for that I would use almond oil or olive oil or neem oil. There are different oils that you can use as a base and then if you want to apply the essential oil you put the essential oil in the base oil and then apply that mixture to your body and so i've done that i've done that primarily with pre-prepared oils that are ayurvedic oils which is ayurvedic is an indian form of medicine and so i used formulas such as shuga Sugadi and another one. One is to perform relaxation, the other is to, I don't know, they have their purposes. So I've used those oils in the past and I put on my body and I would sit in the sun and I didn't feel the, I haven't felt anything like I'm feeling now. So I think the tea tree oil is very potent and toxic and basically a poison and should not be used directly as was recommended to me by this nutritionist. I don't even know if I would use it within a carrier oil. I mean, the, the nausea that I feel from this tea tree oil is at another level, so I'm going to stay away from it. Now, I also use what are known as LD oil. And LD is it's, it's something that was promoted by Dr. Budwig, who was healing cancer patients. Now, she would heal cancer patients is on a diet of oil and protein. She would use low-fat cottage cheese and then flaxseed oil and make a mixture called cork. And this was something that she had incredible success with healing patients at her health center. Yet she would use not only that diet of this cork mixture, yet also she would recommend relaxation and time in the sun to get vitamin D and before you would go in the sun she would recommend LD oils and the LD I have an LD oil so you can I put that on my body it's a, it's a decent oil I don't think it's causing anything toxic and I'm not using it right now because uh, I think it's basically the way that the skin works is that's that's eating you're taking it into your body and it's going in the same like right now I, I'm fasting and I'm digesting the tea tree oil. So I'm not using the LD oil now. I'm just mentioning it in case, in case you're interested in knowing about it. 
So I do have the LD oil and I have the Ayurvedic oils. I'm going to return the tea tree oil that was too intense. And then some of the other essential oils I have, I might return them as well. Frankincense and spikenard and these types of oils. So that's the update. I mean, the, the, I have a nauseous feeling in my stomach. It's not an intense nauseous feeling, but it's an, a feeling that, that I would rather not have. And from what I understand in the guidance that I have, that this should, should go away in, in 10 days. In 10 days, I'll enter in, in another phase where the body will rebuild itself. It could go away in two days. When I enter, there's going to be a new phase in two days where the body, where I should have higher energy because the body has um, healed to a certain point. And then 10 days from now is when I go into the phase where the body rebuilds itself. And uh, as I mentioned before, I've done this before. I did this year 14 days. And so where I am now is a little over, or it's a, basically half of what I did earlier this year. Earlier this year, I didn't have this nausea. So I think the reason that I have the nausea now is because I put the tea tree oil on my foot. And, um, and this is good. It's a good experience because now I know that the tea tree oil is not something that I should use. It's toxic and it's making me nauseous. So I wanted to give that update. Other things that I expect my body to metabolize. There are... I had vaccinations when I was younger and I had contrast dye injected into me. I think that the contrast dye was metabolized yesterday, although there may be more. And vaccinations, the last vaccination I had was the flu shot, which I had in 2013. And after that, I realized th this is not in my best interest. A lot of the symptoms that I have, I believe, are from vaccinations. I believe that I know pretty pretty much that the contrast dye that I was given five times, that it did not leave my body. It's still in my body and it might have left last night. And then I was sedated and there were vaccinations that were given to me as I was growing up. Now, which of the vaccinations did I have? Well, I don't really know what I had as a young person. I do know that when I was in elementary school, we had a hepatitis vaccination. And I believe I took at least one, perhaps two of those. I don't think I took all three. And then I had a tetanus shot when I had stepped on a rusty nail. And I had other vaccinations because I was able to travel to India and they wanted it. a yellow fever vaccination. So I had had that. So I had a lot of vaccination when I was younger. And so those need to leave my body now, basically. And through the fast, they will leave. Because the, as I explained earlier, the way that it works is once you've stopped eating, now your body has energy to take care of itself and do maintenance. And so I have, there is something known as lymphocytes. Basically, they are part of the white blood cells, a small percentage of white blood cells. And there's two of them. And their responsibility is to go around and to identify toxic cells and then mark them. And then those, those cells will, will be metabolized. They'll be destroyed and then the toxins will be taken into the kidney. The kidney will filter the blood from the toxins and the toxins come out in urine. So that gets back to my urine. I'm, I'm continuing to urinate and it's still a yellow color. So something is leaving my body and the yellow color i'm not sure what it signifies what it is that's leaving my body but i i'm not eating anything and i'm not drinking anything other than water and i'm drinking mineral water and that is to stay hydrated and to and to support this process so that's the update on day seven of an extended Minimum 41 day water fast. My goal is to go at least 41 days. Yet if I experience hunger, which I have never experienced in my life, I have never experienced hunger. If I experience hunger or if I believe that my body needs protein to heal and 
I will break the fast. And right now, based on what I can tell, my body is not using protein to heal. So that's it. I'm going to continue the fast today. It's a good experience. I enjoy it because, as I said, three forms of knowledge. There is theoretical knowledge. And when you're given theoretical knowledge, you need to think critically about it. Do you trust the person who's giving you the knowledge? Is that person qualified? Is that person giving you facts? Or is that person giving you erroneous information? And a lot of people, they accept truth from other people without really critically thinking about it. Okay? So it's dangerous. Very dangerous theoretical knowledge. Second form of knowledge is experiential. So you know something because you experienced it. One thing to learn about building a house, right? You take a course on how to build a house and how to plan a budget and hire contractors. Theoretical. Second thing is to actually build the house. And if you actually build a house, then you really understand it. That's the true knowledge because it's applied knowledge and you are doing it. That's always better. Okay? Experience is an is always a better source of wisdom and knowledge. And then the third is explaining what you know to someone else. It's basically teaching. And if you are able to teach someone, teach something to someone else, and that person can understand it, then you're at the highest level of understanding. So if there's a professor or a expert on something, and it, that person is able to teach it to another person, that's the highest form of knowledge, highest form of wisdom. But to get to there, you need the experiential knowledge. Trying to teach someone theory is... It's, it's basically just sharing the theory. So they will learn the theory. Yet, if you're only teaching theory, you don't even know if it's true yourself. You might just be propagating nonsense, right? Which is what a lot of people do these days. They hear it on TV or they read an article and then they get excited and tell others. And that is, uh, that's not diligence. Okay, so there is that. I will never use the tea tree oil again. I'm telling you right now, that's all going back. I'm not touching it because... I feel nauseous and I know it's toxic. This is not a good feeling. Yet I know that my body is strong and it will get through this. It will it will find those cells that don't need to be in the body and tag them for elimination and I will urinate them out. And I really, really look forward to getting into the next phase or, and the later phases, which I have experienced before, high energy. Other thing is today I have high energy and I ordered a barbell, a heavy barbell. I also ordered the weights for the barbell. Now the barbell arrived, it's a curl bar. So I use that to just practice the, I don't know how much that barbell weighs, but it's, it's not a light one. So I don't know, maybe 10 pounds or, or 12 pounds. And so I did that curls and uh, did it with my daughter and son watching and the, they gave me some goal, which I, I think I met and then, and it's good because when you exercise your body, you support the healing process. Okay. So it's a toxic feeling from tea tree oil, yet I know it's going to pass and I look forward to getting into the next phase. The next phase will start tomorrow or, or two days from now, tomorrow's day eight and then day nine. The next phase is good. Other point I just wanted to make, my mother saw one of my videos where I talked about diet and in terms of my diet when growing up, how it was deficient and it wasn't nutritious and there was a lot of junk food in the diet. And then she took that as an insult. And I just want to clarify, I didn't mean that in any way, shape or form as an insult to my mother. My mother was doing the best that she could do given the situation she was in, where she was overwhelmed for a variety of reasons. One, my father was an alcoholic, he was a womanizer, and he had a psychiatrist friend who was a psychopath. And the psychiatrist friend tried to have her abort her daughter. And that caused a postpartum depression. And then once she was in the postpartum depression, the psychiatrist got a hold of her and got her addicted to all sorts of medication. So she was being attacked 
And I did not mean any disrespect when I talked about my diet. I was, when I talked about my diet, I said that it was nutritionally deficient. And it was. It was nutritionally deficient because of Wonder Bread and because of margarine instead of butter. But the reason my mother would buy margarine instead of butter, butter is because it was less expensive and she was trying to make the budget go further. So, and I talked about the negative aspects because in that video, I was recalling what is all of the toxins and junk that's in my system that needs to detox. But she also cooked very well. She cooked really good food. So when I got older and I left home, I was living in Boston area and I came back and I asked her how to cook certain food so I could cook it for myself. She taught me how to cook roti, which is an unleavened flatbread. She taught me how to cook uh, chana, which is a chickpeas. And um, she taught me how to cook uh, dal, which is lentils. And those foods are delicious. I, I, I loved them. I enjoyed them. They were good when she cooked them for me. And I enjoyed being able to cook them for myself. And then she had other very delicious foods. She would make a Chinese food with noodles and chicken and broccoli. I loved that. And I still do. It was a very, very good meal. So I am not saying that my mother didn't know how to cook. My mother does know how to cook. She's an expert at cooking. Other things that she would make that were good. She did a, a chicken curry, delicious chicken curry. I would love that when she made it get. And then she did another curry, which was eggs and potatoes and peas. Again, I loved it. Okay. So my mother did a great job and she cooked some very good food. Yet there were aspects of the diet, which were not, which were not good, like the Wonder Bread and some of these other, you know, the, I talked about the soda pop and aluminum can and potato chips. Now I wanted that. I asked for that because that's what I wanted to eat. So it's not like she was putting it in my lunch. It's something that I asked for and it was on sale. And so I got it and then I had it and I was happy because I was hungry and I would eat my potato chips and drink my soda pop and, and I was good to go. And then going to places like McDonald's and Wendy's, I don't consider that junk food. I think McDonald's, Wendy's, Burger King, all these places have a, a good menu, good food. And if you enjoy it, that's adequate nutrition. And so I did not mean to insult my mother in any way. Yet she did the best that she could given the circumstances that she was in. And now I'm learning that the white bread is garbage and it happened. It was, it was across the board. People used to like to eat multigrain bread and then they started eating white bread and now they're going back to multigrain bread, right? And there is a bread called a seen bread or manna bread. They talk about in the Bible. That's a good bread. I enjoy that bread. And I love, love raisin bread. I haven't had it in a long time, but I used to eat the raisin bread and put a lot of butter on it. I think that's the secret to eating, eating bread. If you do enjoy bread is to put a lot of butter on it. If you're basically, it should be like you're eating butter, but the bread just helps you hold the butter and, uh, and don't take the wonder bread. That's it, right? I'm not, I didn't mean to insult her in any way, shape or form. That wonder bread was garbage. It was disgusting. I didn't want to eat it. It does not have any bearing on my mother's ability to feed us. And she did a great job of feeding us. I'm, I'm alive, doing well. And so are my brothers and sisters. And the margin was disgusting in that, you know, I told her because I couldn't stand the taste of it and she stopped using it. So she did a great job. Didn't mean any to insult her. And I'm sorry if it came across that way. So that's it. Wanted to wrap. I just wanted to mentioned the tea tree oil. It's disgusting and it's harmful and toxic and I'm never going to use it again. And I can feel it being um, detoxed right now. And I look forward to getting into the next phase. It's going to be tomorrow or the next day. My energy is still high. It's just there's this, you know, it's like a nauseous feeling in my stomach and it's, and I can taste the tea tree oil. So that's, and that's my fault, right? It was recommended to me and I put it on my feet and I won't do it again. So you live and you learn. And that's, that's the best that you can do is that in every scenario, every situation, learn from it. You can learn from anything within 
each failure is a seed of success. So the tea tree oil didn't work. Fine, I move on. I'm not going to use a tea tree oil. I'm going to find what works. Thomas Edison invented the light bulb after inventing 10,000 failures. He wanted to invent the light bulb. He had an idea. 10,000 times he tried, and then he got the light bulb, and he patented it, and now we have light bulbs everywhere. So keep that in mind. If you are an innovator and you're driving towards a goal, you may fail. And that doesn't mean you stop and quit. All that means is you reflect on why you failed and then try again. You pick yourself up and try again. This applies to every aspect of life. If you are persistent and you have a vision and you want to get to that vision, you will get there. You have everything you need to get there. You're going to need to be aware and learn from your successes and your failures and continuously adapt, have follow-ups, and move forward. I have a startup right now, okay? And I have filed a patent, and I have a bunch of other patents that I want to file, yet I want to focus on one at first. And I need a developer. Well, and I know this because it's happened in the past. Trying to hire a developer, you know what type of person you need. You put the job posting out there, you get hundreds of submissions, and then of those hundreds of submissions, there may be 15, I think I got 100 submissions the last time I did this. I got 100 submissions, 15 of them seemed like they were worth interviewing. I had the interview with them, I had three questions I asked all of them. Some of them were dumbfounded, they could not answer the question. One of them answered the questions, and I hired that person, and he did a great job. And that's the same with what I'm dealing with right now, except for, and you can tell the way they communicate too, whether they're going to do a good job or not. And so I had to fire a bunch of people. You know, you hire them, they cannot perform, you fire them. Then you hire another one, cannot perform, you fire it. You eventually find someone that can perform. And that's the type of person you want a relationship with and you want to reward that person and continue to keep that person happy. But again, you learn from each failure, right? So. When I hire someone and I learn from that experience, then I know, okay, the next time around, I need to make sure that I clearly communicate the requirements and set up milestones and have better communication. And then once you have done it for long enough, it becomes second nature and then you can scale further. So. The commentary around my mother was not meant as an insult. It was a learning experience. I appreciate growing up. I have a great life. As I said, I was never hungry in my entire life. I had a great life, great upbringing. I have a great mother. She's a beautiful woman. And I thank her for her sacrifice and what she did to raise not only me, yet three other brothers and sisters. And to do so while married to an alcoholic and a womanizer and being attacked by his psychiatrist friend. So she's a very strong woman. And I pray that she'll be blessed and that she'll flourish. There's a scripture that she likes that talks about God will bring back all of the lost years. And I believe that's going to happen for her. And I'm going to pray for her, okay? I'm going to pray for her right now. And uh, if you enjoy prayer, please pray for her as well. Lord Jesus, thank you for my mother, Janice Saran. She was a great mother and she sacrificed a lot to raise me. She took me to church and because of her, I learned about you and have a great relationship with you now. And I have a direct relationship with the living son of God. And I have your word and your wisdom and it guides my life. And I'm very blessed to have that. I pray that you will bless her abundantly and that you will Lead her on a path to health. I know you can heal her fully. I know that she does not need psychiatry and all these idiot doctors that are trying to keep her stuck, keeping her as a revenue stream. She doesn't need the psychotropic medication. And all she needs is everything she has. She needs some fresh air, some sunlight, and she needs hobbies and friends, Lord. So I pray that she'll bring all of that into her life. It's cold right now because where she's living, it's cold. Yet spring is in the air. So I pray that you will restore the years that were lost, the years that were lost when she was married to an alcoholic and under a lot of stress. Now that she's free from that and she has 
her own apartment and control of her life. And she has a lot of people who love her, not just her children, also her grandchildren, Lord. So I pray that you will bless her in these years and that you will re repay her for all the years of torment that she experienced, Lord. Draw her closer to yourself. Let her read your scriptures and understand them and apply them to her life. Allow her to be a source of wisdom to other women who are younger than her and allow her to live a long life, Lord. Allow her to be happy and to be empowered and to do what she needs to be happy and to realize your will for her life, Lord. In the holy, most precious name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. So I pray the same thing for your mother, okay, if you're watching this. I pray that she's blessed abundantly and that she lives a long life. Mothers are very important. It's the most important responsibility in our society, in my opinion. The most important responsibility in our society is a mother and her relationship with her children. These days, there's a lot of conditioning and brainwashing and new age nonsense around being an independent woman and putting on your pants and going to the office and bossing people around. It's complete nonsense. It's demonic. That is far, far secondary. The responsibility of a mother and her relationship with her children is the most important relationship in the world and it trumps any type of boss, executive, career-oriented position that a woman can have. And I feel sorry for the women who have been taken in by that brainwashing and now want to go to the office and try to work their way up the career ladder and hit the glass ceiling and start, you know, calling injustice and whatnot. You know why you're hitting the glass ceiling? Because you are not doing the right thing. You should be spending more time with your children. The glass ceiling is always going to be there. That's part of corporate America. So I'll leave it at that. If you're a mother and you are raising children, you have the mo utmost respect for me. I believe that you are the most cherished resource in the world and that the future of humanity is in your hand. And if you're in that position, stick to that position. I've talked in my past videos about German New Medicine and water retention. And I'll point out this. The water retention happens when there's a conflict in the kidney collecting tubules, and it can be caused by abandonment, isolation, refugee, or an existence conflict. Existence conflict is basically you have no purpose in your life. The refugee is one that I've had when you're in an unfamiliar place. If you move to another country or you, you travel a lot, you will, will have a refugee conflict. These other ones, abandonment and isolation, they are caused a lot of times today when a child is taken to a daycare and left there and does not have sufficient time with his or her family and doesn't feel loved. And then that child will become obese. And if you're doing that to your child, I think you should reconsider it because the child can learn from you and education starts in the home. Education starts in the home. If you want to educate your child, you need to have a relationship with that child and you need to spend time with that child and that child loves you more than anyone else and wants time with you. So keep that in mind. I mean, sure, you can drop the kid off at daycare and then if you're making a little bit more money in your career, which you probably aren't because you're paying taxes and all this and plus it's taking all your time. So the child is going to have the kidney collecting tubule syndrome, which is why we have an obesity epidemic in the United States because more and more women are career oriented and putting their careers before their children. My mother didn't do that for the most part. I'm grateful for that. She had some jobs, a seasonal job. She would work at the post office and she tried working at, at a department store one time, but then she stopped. And I'm very grateful that she didn't work. Even though my father was trying to tell her to work, that's because my father didn't have his balls in shape, right? Because he was the provider and he should have been able to provide and she should have taken care of the children. And I'll tell them that, tell him that to his face. And then his psychiatrist friend is sending his wife to work. And his other friends are saying, yeah, she should be working. And No, no, no. Wife doesn't need to work. It's more than enough 
responsibility and the greatest job in the world to raise children. So I'm very glad that my mother wasn't working. I'm glad that she was there and at home and providing us with food and activities. There's no limit. I can go on. I can There's a song by Tupac Shakur. Called Dear Mama. I'll post a link. I'll post the link below. I could go on for days. I could go on for days about the positive things about my mother and what she did. I won't right now because I respect your time, but she was a wonderful lady. I'm going to post a link to the song below. You can listen to that song. And I hope you're having a great day. I hope you have a great year. And thank you for watching.